It's 6 a.m. in Washington, midday in Damascus. I'm Zane Berger. You're watching CNN, and this is World One Live from London. The terrifying sound of gunfire echoes through a neighborhood that used to be filled with the sounds of life. <laughs> Thursday was the latest in a long line of black days in the Syrian conflict. Activists say 149 people were killed in fighting around the country, and they're reporting at least 19 more have died this Friday. Just four days remain until voters across the U.S. cast their vote for president. Both candidates are trying to make every single minute count. On Thursday, President Barack Obama campaigned in the crucial swing states of Wisconsin, Nevada, and Colorado telling supporters the country is digging itself out of an economic hole. Well, the presidential race will be hinged on what happens in just a handful of states. They're known as swing states because, well, they could either swing to each side for the two main candidates. They're the states in yellow here that you see on this map, and Colorado is one of those. A new CNN poll there shows a virtual tie with Mr. Obama leading Mitt Romney by 50 to 48 percent, and that is well within the poll's margin of error. It's actually a similar picture if you look nationally. The latest CNN poll of polls right up and shows voting on Tuesday. Both men are aiming to keep on campaigning, and Mitt Romney and Barack Obama have each written op-eds for CNN. We want you to go to our website, CNN.com, and take a look at them, do a read-through, and see what both men are saying today. CNN's political editor, Paul Steinhauser, is weighing in on all of this. Uh, Paul, you're taking a look at those op-eds right now. You, you know, they were just released. Let's start with President Obama. From what you can tell, what's the headline there? Uh, President Obama doing very much like, he, uh, like he's doing on the campaign trail, like some of the sound you played from... Thanks so much. Uh, in a couple of hours from now, we're going to get the latest official statistics on job creation in the U.S. The last monthly employment report before the presidential election. Jobs in the economy are the key issues, as Paul was saying, for voters. And today's numbers could have a major impact on the race. President Obama and his Republican challenger Mitt Romney are both campaigning in the must-win state of Ohio today. CNN's Ali Velshi is also there and he joins us now live. Um, Ali, how critical is this? This is critical because there are, there's a small pie of undecided voters here in Ohio and in all the swing states, including Florida and Virginia. Neither of these candidates have enough of these electoral college votes to guarantee a win, so they've got to get these... And when you go on the Election Express, Ali, and you talk to voters, what are some of the things they're telling you that they want to see beyond jobs? Well, they want answers, Zane. They want exactly what we journalists want. They, they... Let's see what U.S.-based newspapers are saying about all of this today, okay? USA Today's headline is this, Election Winner Gets a Mess. This editorial says this, The preeminent challenge is finding a path to reduce the nation's debt and deficits while stabilizing the economic recovery. Take a look at this headline in the International Herald Tribune. It says, U.S. campaigns sidestep long-term joblessness. On the agenda for the next Congress and the next president is ensuring that the unusually long spells of unemployment now afflicting many people remain a temporary factor resulting from the recession. Finally, look at the Wall Street Journal. This is the headline, Obama, Romney, resume trading jabs. This article is focusing on the campaign trail saying this, both candidates have been trying to walk a really fine line between campaigning and respecting the people hit by the storm. Years ago, Barack Obama brought Berlin to a standstill. Almost a quarter of a million people came to hear the White House contender set out his foreign policy. Today, many U.S. expats who were in that crowd say that the president has not lived up to the promises and that they're just disillusioned. So could Germany's 100,000 Americans be about to change sides? Fred Pleitkin joins us now from Berlin. He's live. Fred, are they going to change sides or stick with Obama? Well, I don't think they're going to say, change sides just yet. I mean, from the people that I've talked to, they still seem to be in Obama's corner. However, it is safe to say that a lot of the magic... Oh, that improvement. You... That's about the kindest way to describe life for millions of people in the U.S. Northeast. Three days after Superstorm Sandy dealt a historic blow to New York City as well as neighboring New Jersey. Power is still out to more than 3 million customers in 15 states. Some of the half million New Yorkers without power may be in the dark for another 
another 10 days. No power means no working petrol pumps, so motorists are queuing up for kilometers just to tank up. Also, another problem is that fresh water is in short supply as well. CNN's Rob Marciano is live in Manhattan. He's at the Brooklyn Bridge. He joins us now. Rob, first of all, let's look at the morning commute. How is that actually shaping up today? Are people able to get around better? Uh, you know, yesterday they were in fairly good spirits. They limited the number of cars that could come over the bridges, or at least they made people... So much. Well, our eye reporters have sent in some pretty amazing images uh, after the storm. We just want you to take a look at this. Starting with this picture, it's an aerial photo of storm damage. This is actually just along the Jersey Shore. What you're actually seeing is a roller coaster. Look at that, completely twisted and, and submerged in the water like that. It was sent to I report by Patrick Day Jr. Patrick also sent us this picture. It was also above the New Jersey shoreline. And uh, his father actually flew a helicopter over the area and they took this image to share with us. Just look at the extent of the destruction there. Take a look at Morristown in New Jersey also. Dennis Boulanger sent in this picture of people. Look at this line. They're all lined up looking for gas here in these uh, orange jerry cans here. This is at a local station and Dennis has told CNN that about 86% of his town is just without power. One more picture for you here. Uh, I reporter Roshan sent us this photograph of residents sifting through damaged homes and belongings on Staten Island. He says people are just trying to get back onto their feet. Remember, you can send in your pictures at iReport.com. And remember, too, though, we don't want you to put yourself in any danger. We do want to get images that you think are compelling, things that you want to share with people around the world. But just be careful. Now, halfway through the final World Golf Championship event of this season, and one player is threatening to run away from the rest of the star-studded field. Our own star and stud, Alex Thomas, is here. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> With more details, who is this? Well, he's a major champion, Zane, but one of golf's quiet men, and not from the Williams sisters in Africa. Yeah, they're having loads of fun there doing that dance. Yes. <laughs> Thanks so much. You're watching World One live from London. Up next, our weather update with Karen McGuinness at the International Weather Center. Northeastern U.S. still have got a big cleaning up job right ahead of them following the deadly storm that struck Monday. Our meteorologist Karen McGuinness is at the International Weather Center to tell us a little bit more about what's going on. Hi. Hi, Zane. And yes, we continue to watch the resilience of people who live across the northeastern New England. And this was Superstorm Sandy. Started out as a hurricane, became extra tropical. But Good job getting through it. Thanks so much. You're watching World One Live from London. I'm Zane Vergy. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll bring you an update of the news headlines in just a couple of minutes, so stay with CNN.